know, being being a First Nation, a female, First Nation, single, mother, um, I'm going to start off with how everything first started, try and summarize. Um, when I was three... When I was three years old, I had a sister that was three months three months younger than me. And we lived in a house, like, after my, my grandparents back here in Canada to settle down and whatever, you know, get their life and the kids. I was raised on my reserve without, on Siksiga Nation, without my language, without... Oh, I went to a day school for residential. I went to residential day school. And um, so my grandparents never depended on um, uh, FNIB, you know, First Nation Inuit benefits, nothing. They bought my, my aunties and uncles, my mom, their glasses, paid for their teeth, everything, because my grandparents did not want it to depend on anything with the government. And so, my mom, me, my dad, my sister, I'm the oldest, so my sister was three months. So my mom and my three, my three month old sister, and I'm three, remember? So they had to walk across the field, the pasture, you know, the cows and the, everything. They had to walk through to get to my grandma and grandpa's, to the running water, to go take a bath. I stayed home with my gra with my dad. and. I was three and you guys are lucky you can hear this now because um, God just allowed me to um, see this and able to talk about it and heal overcomer of everything when I was three years old my mom and them went for a bath and I, I was like this with my dad so my dad, I don't know, whatever, he was a carpenter, he was doing whatever, and he was an alcoholic, he was losing his job, he was quitting, oh, he's getting fired, and he was a alcoholic, and so he beat up nine cops, uh, some, an altercation happened, and he was going to get those nine charges, assault charges, and plus he just lost his job as a carpenter. So me, I'm three years old. All I remember when I turn 40, when I'm, when I'm 40, all I remember is seeing my dad's slippers on the floor. And it comes to, my dad killed himself in front of me when I was three years old. He hung himself in front of me when I was three years old. And to me, when I was 40, that's when I was able to remember and understand and know what happened. And back then I never I just knew my dad committed suicide I, ne I never knew anything and now I can talk about it and so my mom got married again this guy committed suicide too so so I'm like seven around I get a seven eight around there I'm seven there's a monster in my dad in my in my um our clan the raw eater clan it's somebody who married my mom, my oldest auntie. So this monster molested every single girl in our family that was little. That's what goes on in reserves. Babies are getting molested. They're not happening when they're drinking or whatever. It happens when they're little, when, when we're little. And so this monster, you know, with, with, with what happened with my dad, then getting this monster in our family and you know, no one will ever listen to whatever happened. It, and so God, when God, when I allowed God back into my life, because I left God when I turned 15, and when I allowed all that time when I was little, I was always praying because my mom took everything out on me. Like she didn't whip me. She beat the crap out of me. My mom didn't drink, do drugs, nothing. So I was married when I was 15 till I was 28, and that's when I realized all the trauma, whatever's going on, why my mind's all crazy. I didn't understand why. I just knew I felt messed up and heavy and dark and yucky, the smallest person. And then I've always been a caregiver. I worked with health services on Siksiga for over 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. and. When I moved up here into the city, I was working at the DI, and um, I love to pray, so I got here. I got here 
almost two years ago and oh I just love it because my smile brightens up anyone's day my good morning brightens up every the people's day because I'm genuine I learned to be genuine what I say what I do means and this job I just my guests the guests here is so awesome because everything they went through I went through I was homeless I was in that lost in addiction I was um, abused I'm First Nation a country mouse in the city and you know it was it was tough but not but only God got me here and that's the verses that kept me going and him and I'm still going so out there when they tell me you know I'm having a bad day because I'm, I'm homeless or I'm having a bad day because I'm depressed and I tell them you know what I was there but God took me from there he delivered me from there but we have to ask him we have to ask him to do it God is there he's just with his hand reaching out for for us to it's our choice so until just till I was 40 I'm able to be who I am who I want to be, smile, laugh, be who I want to be. Because back then, all I knew was I had to be under someone's control. If not, I didn't know what to do. And then I just got drunk. I just turned to alcohol for six years. I was a functioning alcoholic and workaholic. And I lost my job with health services because I went to work drunk. And what makes me feel happy and filled with joy is knowing that the love of the Lord is in control with the youth in our church because we that's where my energy goes it's focused is to encourage them and then I walk by the water I like going by the water the river it makes me feel calm to collect myself feel winding down from the crazy world I am an overcomer of drugs and alcohol, and I am proud to be First Nation.